the Vietnam War was going on, uh, Watergate, President Nixon was, was in office at that time, who uh, later resigned while he was there. So there was just stuff and there were protests all over. Everybody was looking for a group, you know what I mean? And, and the sorority and fraternities fulfill that group. The 60s was a time, of course, during the civil rights movement. So as members of the fraternity, we participated in sit-ins and demonstrations and civil rights rallies here in the city of Austin. We helped, if you will, desegregate Congress Avenue. On that particular campus, you were in such a minority that you knew that, that people really sometimes didn't know how to, uh, to take you. But at least united as a group, we took part in all the other activities. All of the sororities and, and fraternities uh, participated in, in uh, protest. We were dusted with flour and, and, and syrup poured on us and, and called all kind of derogatory uh, names that we had not experienced before. And that group of us was made up of largely of the members of Greek led organizations on campus. So we all bonded together. Some of the petty differences we had on campus with other, with other organizations were ironed out and, and we became more of a, um, a Greek family, if you will. Uh, I majored in biology when I was there and my classes uh, had many, many males in them. In most classes, you were the only um, person of color. And I only had a couple of professors um, my whole time that I was there, make remarks or, or people that I knew were not in my corner or, or weren't happy that I was there. At that time, and in 1970, there were 413 African American students. There were more than 42,000 non-African Americans that were there, so we were like 0.1 percent. The black people on campus were united, whether you were in the store, whether you were not, that we were so such a minority that we um, bonded with each other. There had been some progression made, but still we were very, very much a minority, and I particularly bonded with this group of, of, um, of women. I liked that they stood out among the, the, uh, the leaders on campus, and that impressed me, right? Lifetime bonds that I formed with some of my line brothers and let me know what true friendship really is. Let me feel confident and assured that if, if I was in need, that I had just a band of men that I could depend on to, uh, to share my joys, my sorrows, and, and in whatever aspects I needed help. I, I felt pretty sure that because of the bond and because of the time we spent pledging together, uh, that it was a lifetime thing. Love and progress and just sisterhood. It is um, an organization, but foremost, it's uh, a sisterhood. So I had someone there that is still part of my life today when I was looking at these. Uh, photos, uh, and the, these are chapter photos, and I pledged with six other women, there were seven on my line, and one of them is uh, still here in Austin, and uh, my best friend, and I talk to her every day. Because we had common values, then, then we have uh, a relationship that is um, uh, definitely a godsend.
And we went to a basketball game, I remember, distinctly and supported two players that were African-American. Uh, Larry Robinson was, was one and the other was Spider Johnson. I just remember that any time they would score, we had all decided we would sit together in the, the grandstand and um, protest and say, more black Not students, here. more black students, 13 percent because uh, African. That wasn't uh, very much a civil dif disobedience at that time. We didn't engage in any protest in the early 50s. A voteless people is a hopeless people where we would encourage people to go vote. But you know, during that time, it was a time of poll tax. So we were encouraging people to pay their poll tax. But the, the, the effort was to get them out to vote. Uh, yes, I had a chance to uh, actually sit in the back of the bus. I had a chance to drink at the separate water fountains. Uh, I had to go in the back of the door, so to speak. We weren't allowed, of course, to go into restaurants of prominence. There were some African-American restaurants uh, that uh, we, we had dinner in. But the effort was not so much to protest civilly, but to encourage uh, young men and to help the society be the very best they could be, especially African-American society, so that our young people could uh, get uh, productive jobs and help themselves economically. It was a historic occurrence that took place in 1954. Uh, that was the Supreme Court decision of uh, the Brown case, which uh, uh, outlawed uh, desegregation in the public schools in the country. And so when we graduated, we graduated with great hope and great anticipation. And of course, the fraternity embraced that. Uh, uh, our young men were always <coughs> encouraged during that time to make good grades. Uh, and most of the alpha men wanted to be scholars. Uh, most of the alpha men wanted to go to graduate school because our professors had encouraged us. Uh, and, uh, you know, we needed confidence. <laughs> so they would always say, you can do it. You can do it. Uh, branch out. The fraternity was at the forefront of encouraging people uh, to make sure uh, that you uh, move on upward in advancement and in education which is paramount in the lives of all people but most especially in the lives of African Americans.